Hey guys, today we have an awesome audio interview with Justin Mora of Ice Nine Kills. He talks about how his band went from following Warp Tour to being signed to Fearless Records. He gives a lot of great advice for bands coming up, including the best way to build a fan base, how to run your band's business, and the importance of patience. A lot of awesome stuff in this interview, so let's get to it. Uh, so Justin, you've been doing music for a while now. What's one thing you wish you knew getting started? Uh, that probably that it can sometimes take a very long time to get even a little bit of success. I think my generation was the first of bands to really like start blowing up overnight in this scene. It's when it really started to get big, this music genre. So a lot of kids see that and think, well, I can do that. Especially with the internet age, I think you can just blow up online and that's it. And I definitely had that mentality at one point in my life, but after doing this for so long, you start to realize it doesn't always work out that way. And honestly, I know for us, our band was never like that. We were never the band that blew up overnight. So you said we've been doing it for a very long time, and just in the last couple of years, things have really started to pick up. But I honestly think you're better off that way. I see a lot of bands that get big really fast fizzle out. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And I feel like for us, with a slow build, you, it enables you to build a really loyal fan base, which I feel like we have. And now that it's really growing, like the people who liked us before, they're not doing that thing where like, oh, well, people like this band now, I'm not gonna listen to them anymore because they're really loyal. And I think that's that's what you need to really have a career, okay. not just like a moment. To actually so building have a, a strong relationship yeah. with fans. Excellent. What's your advice to other bands that are wanting to build a fan base? What's the best way to go about it? You have I, the, first, the thing we always tell people: learn how to do as much for yourself as you can. There's so much that goes into being in a band besides writing music and playing shows. You need to learn how to market yourself. You need to learn how to book your own tours, uh, design your own merch, figure out how to make your own stage setup, stage props, just little stuff like that. Because is that you know, what you guys do? I mean. Not so much anymore, but yes. I mean, I mean, to this day, we're very active in that. Like, we deal, we come up with a lot of our own merch designs. Not all of them, but a lot of them. We oversee all of our merch. We don't re outsource that to somebody to figure out. Uh, we definitely rely a lot on our own ideas. Um, keeping our band running as a business is really falling on us and our label and management. But it's something we had to learn to do early on because in the beginning years, you know, we didn't have anybody to help us. And, uh, you just have to be willing to uh, get knocked down, I guess. You know, we've had a lot of roadblocks as a band, and we had to really push through a lot of this stuff. And there were moments where I didn't know if we were going to be able to, but we did because we felt like if we got the opportunity, we could be, we could make it a career. And I'm glad that we pushed through it because it's very much, it's more satisfying now knowing that we got through it and that we're doing it now. So. You just have to be, you have to be willing to sacrifice pretty much your whole life, <laughs> essentially. Okay. All right, makes sense. Uh, so you're signed to Fearless. Yep. Um, a lot of other bands think they want to be signed to like independent label like Fearless. Yeah. What's your advice for bands trying to, you know, make their way up that to that level? Well, I would say if you're in a position where, you know, you're talking to labels, uh, definitely don't sign anything until you've had a lawyer look at it. Okay. <laughs> um, that's... I cannot stress that enough. Okay. Why you, was it, has there been a situation? I mean, it, it's happened to a lot of bands. Uh, we've had our moments. I mean, I'm not going to get too deep into that, but uh, we've definitely learned a few things the hard way in our in our career. Uh, definitely have a lawyer look at something before you sign anything. Don't be afraid to argue for things you want in a contract. Um, I know a big thing, especially in today's music landscape, where there's not as much money involved because of all the illegal downloading and whatnot. Yeah. Labels want to see a band, like to go back to my last point, that can do a lot of things on their own. Uh, especially when it comes to touring. If a label sees a band that can put together their own tours, even if they're just short little things, they see that you know, you've taken the initiative, you've toured a little bit, so you're not going to fall apart when they put you on a tour. That's, that's a big thing. I always tell local bands or smaller bands, try to do your own tours. The way to do it, you know, you, you start small, do a weekend, then do a week, and slowly go in this circular motion, expanding out further and further. That's that's the way I always tell bands to Excellent. do it. Excellent. All right, that makes total sense. Um, so, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you guys, one of the ways you guys came up was following the Vans Warp Tour. What's your advice to bands that are doing the same thing right now or are thinking about doing it? Um... 
Well, I'll say right off the bat, it's it kind of sucks. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard work, especially on this tour. Yeah, and it can be a little depressing, honestly. You know, you're out there trying to sell your CDs to people who might not care, and then you see all these other bands that are playing and you know having the success. But it that was such a beneficial beneficial thing for this band. To this day, people come up to us and say, "I heard about your band when you were selling CDs in the line in 2008," or they did it before I was in the band. They did it for Taste of Chaos when that was oh, still a thing. Oh, okay. And one time, one of my first tours in this band, it was a tour that was supposed to start in Texas, and we're all from this area. We go down to Texas, get a call, the tour is canceled. We have no money, so we followed in a Data Remember tour. Back oh, up, really? Back up really? here and okay. just sold CDs. Yeah. And it sucked, but like, that's the kind of shit you have to do. Like, yeah. I mean, and you have to kind of be a decent salesman, I guess. Okay. All right. Speaking of that, <laughs> what are some sales skills that bands should learn? I think you just have to be really personable. You can't, you have to, you have to be confident, I guess, but not overbearing. Okay. Um, because if you walk up to somebody and you're like skittish and afraid to talk to them, you're all, you've probably already lost them at that yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, I guess another you just have to have good music. I, guess. I mean, <laughs> it's hard to, unless you're a really good salesman. Right. <laughs> if you have to have decent music, but just honestly, if you're personable, if you're nice, if you don't try to cram it down their throat, it'll go a lot better for you. Excellent. Okay. So uh, going back to like bands that are coming up, how did you guys do it, and how should other bands secure like management, uh, an agent, and and legal representation? Well, I mean, I guess it's different in every scenario. I know for us. Uh, with the management we have now, which is Mike Mowry at Outer Loop Management, okay. that, that was a, uh, Spencer, our singer, had been in contact him, with him for a while, like, you know, emailing him, like, hey, check out our band, please. It was a it was a process for a while. And then one day, it just kind of, he just like, yeah, let's do it. Which was honestly a, a shock to me, because at that point, we had nothing going on. We were kind of like dead in the water, and he took a real chance on us, and I'll always appreciate that. Without him, we would not still be a band. And then him, like he he was the uh, he was the real uh, driver in getting us to the label and everything. He 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 fought for us. I mean, that's what managers do, and good ones. Yeah. And I, I t always tell bands like, don't worry about the label thing or the booking agent. Man, I feel like me personally, I feel like management is the first thing you should go for. Because if you get a if you get a good manager, they're the ones that are go, gonna go fight with you, fight for you yeah. with those people. Um, I would say the. The manager is is the captain of the ship, essentially. The label and the booking agent is the vessel. They are the ones, them and the band are the ones driving it. So I always say management is first, most important. So did Spencer, like from the beginning, ask for management, or did he just kind of? I think like it was just he he he's a uh, very personal, very good. He's very big on networking. Uh, he, we've had several managers since I've been in this band. Um, and then this was Maori. Mike Maori is a guy he knew, and they were in contact back and forth, and it just kind of eventually fell into place for us. Um, got very lucky, and I'll always appreciate it. He awesome. was a bi big help for us. Sweet. Um, so you guys, I have to say, are sick live. Thank you. You're fucking amazing. What, what's uh, advice that you would give to bands trying to create an unforgettable live show? Practice first and foremost. Uh, if you're not. If you're not tight, you know, people are going to not care about you. I mean, there's, I've seen a number of bands that will remain nameless that <laughs> maybe have a lot of hype on them and then they aren't that great live and it goes away. Uh, for us, it was a lot of practice. Um, our entire set, we're all on in yours. Yeah. Our entire set is ran through one click track. Okay. It's one big thing. Like, no we do every, everything, like, is a science for us to the second is the same every day. Wow. And it's just, you know, playing shows. I mean, you have to play shows. Play a ton of shows and just hone your craft. Get good at it. I mean, we're so, we could get better. Like, we still see a lot of things in our set that we can do better. And I think if you feel like you've got to a point where you can't get any better, then there's something wrong because you can always get better. You can always, you know, interact with the crowd better. You can always, you know, there's a million things. Like, we, I always see room for improvement. But, yeah, practice, play a lot of shows. Uh, be prepared to make mistakes playing live. God knows we've done it. Uh, but yeah, once you've done it enough, it kind of becomes like this finely oiled tuned machine. So once you get to that point, it's great. But yeah, there's struggles along the way. Just got to work at it, man. I have just uh, one more question. Uh, Justin, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for 
having the opportunity to do this. I mean, like I said, you know, we've been a band a very long time, and, and this industry can be really unforgiving towards bands that have been around for a while and haven't blown up right away. Uh, and the fact that, you know, our manager took a shot at uh, with us, that Fearless wanted to pick us up, like, those things are a big deal to us. Like, those are things we've been trying to get for years and never got, and we were at a point where we thought maybe we'd never get them. Uh, the fact that fans have stuck with us, long-term fans have stuck with us, I know... It, with so many bands out there, it's easy to get distracted and kind of move on. And a lot of them have stuck with us since we started. Um, and Kevin Lyman, I have to say, obviously, he uh, he's a guy who we've known for years, and he he is he hadn't he doesn't have to put us on this tour, but he does, and he knows our backstory, he knows our story, and he's said that you know he admires the perseverance we've had and we really appreciate that because a lot of people don't don't notice it or don't care and he's a guy that does and to be in his position and notice and care is a big deal and also all of us have great families that have been very supportive you know a number of, I mean we're not that young anymore we're not old but we're not 20 and you know it's easy for a family to look at you and say what are you doing like you don't have a real job but they've been very supportive and now that they see you know it paying off, you know, they're very excited for us, and that that's a huge thing. But I feel like without that foundation, you know, it's hard to do this sort of thing. So, excellent, thank you. Thanks for watching the video. If you like that, check out another interview we did with a band called Flight Club who sold 1,200 CDs while following the Warp Tour. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and follow us on social.